So now you're recording. I'm recording. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Okay, class. Um, we're going to do a continuation of my lesson from last week. Um, so today I think uh, I'm going to lead a warm-up with you guys. So I think in a good place to do it, if you could take out the prelude, um, bar, the pickup to bar 19. Just paying attention like blend, balance, intonation, and, uh, and the dynamics through that. Cool? Instruments up. One, two, three. <laughs> Don't, don't even worry about it. Don't even play them. This is more of just sort of a balanced kind of exercise. So any kind of tricky lines, don't worry about it. Um, so could we just play it and hold that first note and uh, keeping in mind it's piano. So uh, pick up to bar 19, just that one note. Could we, uh, let's, let's have everyone um, hold a concert F. So that would be a G on the clarinets. One, two, three. Okay. And flutes, can you take that the octave down again? And try to, like this is going to be very tricky, but try to play it as quietly as possible. Like super quiet. We're going to do it down and then up again. I mean, quiet playing high register flute is like the hardest thing, but being able to play quiet up there, it'll just open up your sound in general. But anyway. Let's that again. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so I want to play it as written again. Try to really, really, really whisper that high note out and then build up. So as the line goes down, the volume comes up. One, two, three. So what I want to do now is we're going to jump forward to the fugue in classic style. <laughs> so, and I think the best place to start this tune is from the ending. Uh, so let's go right to the last chord. Um, it's just a concert uh, F minor triad, voiced out. So um, yeah, let's just play that. And it, it is double P, so as quiet as possible. Let's give that a try. Instruments up. <laughs> So I'm missing the top voice on the flute. I, yeah, I didn't know where we were. Oh, sorry. Sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, so just from, actually, is there only, do only one of you have the, oh no, the flute parts are doubled, right? There's yeah. one and two? Okay, fantastic. Um, it's the last note or the second last note? Last note. Okay. On the last bar of the tune, oh, okay. that note, sorry. Okay. Excellent. In case anyone doesn't know, it's the uh, thumb, first finger, right. that okay. finger, and this yeah, one. Flat. Or wait, no, it's F. Yeah. Okay, yeah. never mind. I'm just reading that wrong. Oh, no worries. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, yeah, let's do it again. One, two. Cool. Okay, so I want to do that again with the same chord, and I want to whisper. Big crescendo into it, and then back down into nothing. Cool? So I'll cue you. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Okay, great. Now that we've finished the ending, let's go back to the beginning. Um, all right, so what I want to do with this is we're just going to run, I'm just going to conduct it the whole way through. I'm not going to stop it. Um, just so you guys get an idea, you know, tricky parts, whatever else. Um, and then we'll stop, we'll start again, and then I'll stop it incrementally as we go, picking out uh, things we need to work on. Cool? So, instruments up. In this case, just clarinets and uh, bass clarinet. You know what? We'll get there. Um, it's the articulation, but that's not until further into the piece. So I want to start at bar. Where's a good spot? Bar 12. Let's start at bar 12. Just to um, and really for uh, flutes in particular, think about the slurring. It's kind of it's tricky getting from the uh, from that D to the G, you know, without tonguing it. Like, but just be very conscientious of it. We'll work on it in a second. So it's up. <coughs> One, two. <laughs> articulation issues, it's really just a matter of thinking about it. Because first time we came through that, like certain notes were long, certain ones were short, not necessarily in the right places. And like, you know, I mentioned it one time, you guys fix it. So that's it. That's straight up just a mental trick. Um, okay, clarinet's much, much better with those, uh, working out those fingerings. Um, okay, so I really, um, let's just work on those staccato notes though. Um, bass clarinet, if you could just sit out for this, uh, this, yep. this point right now. Sure. Um, I want to take it from bar 19. Just really getting the whole section, everyone like 
cutting, uh, cutting those notes off nice and short. So instruments up. One, two, nineteen. <laughs> Sorry, uh, for clarinets, um, clarinet three, I believe it is, with the not the staccato notes. Is uh, who who has that? At bar nineteen. Uh, that guy. Well, that guy. Okay. Cool. No, 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 no. Um, actually, could I just just hear the clarinets at nineteen? <laughs> Perfect. The instrument's up. One, two. Right. So so who's who's playing the long notes at 19. Is that you? Right, so only staccato notes. So uh, if you don't have it in your part, read off uh, the person next to you. Just, just, for, just for this exercise right now. Instruments up. One, two, three. Stop. So Lorenzo, um, do, you, do you have the staccato part? No. Um, okay, just lay out for a second. Sure. Cool. Instruments up. <laughs> One, two, Awesome, fantastic. Okay, cool. I just want, I was, uh, I was getting a little confused by the different, uh, the legato lines. Actually, no, it's funny. It's, it's wrong in the score. That's not, it's not written in the clarinet. It's written in the uh, bass clarinet. Anyway, so let's, let's do the same spot. Sounding way better, guys. One, two, three. Okay, cool. So for flutes, um, like actually, for everyone, um, for the staccato notes, it's it's not quite like a jazz articulation. In in classical music, it's a little bit more um, like the notes are short, but it's not like ta. You no, know, because I'm hearing like ta ta ta, but it's like ta 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 ta. Like it's almost actually not quite as short, but I mean it's it's more of how you're using the tongue, right? Like as opposed to um, what's the line? It's Hear the difference? Mm -hmm. Right, so let's let's try that again. Just thinking like ta, I'm not not ta, 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 ta. Cool. Instruments up, everybody. Same spot, bar 19. One, two, Good guys, let's take it. Where was that spot before that was bugging me? Oh, okay, yeah. So let's take it from hmm, bar ten, just just for the sake of entrances. Instruments up. One, two, three. <coughs> <coughs> say um, work on slowing down those notes sounds great I think you guys have already fixed it um, fantastic okay um, hmm do, 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 do. what should we do uh, yeah okay you know what let's take it from bar pick up to bar 24 everyone know where that is one Let's try that again. So I'm mean, just going to be one, two, ba, dun, da. Right? Let's rinse up. One, two. Issue as um, with the articulation. The second the line is sort of changing from slurring to staccato, 
like for example, going from bars 30 to 31. I stop hearing the staccatos for like a couple beats and then you guys kind of catch up. So just make sure you look ahead to uh, get the, what types of articulation you should be using at that time. Um, so let's do it from 30 again, being conscious of uh, any changes in your interpretation of the notes. Uh, pardon me, Ashley? Um, at 19, yeah. what do you want me to do articulation-wise? Um, I, sorry, do uh, you have the, the two quarter notes? It's the, like the quarter, quarter note on beat three rest. and the beat one. Okay, um, I would say play those long. Okay. But make sure you're off right on two, and I mean the next one goes into another note. But, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, interpret those as long, I think. Okay, cool. uh, Actually, you know what, let me hear it. Let's, from 19. One, two. Long, for sure long. Yeah. So yeah, as yeah, because that sound it's it's almost like that little boo. It's great. So we want that. Um, cool. So let's let's do thirty, being conscious of uh, what's happening in the next bar. Um, yeah, thirty. One, two. When you guys get higher, I'm starting to hear a lot of tonguing, and I mean that's you know a method of getting the notes to speak, right? Um, but in this case, it's very important that you kind of slur up there, and like, I mean, in terms of getting up there, um, like um, actually, do you guys remember last week I was telling you the importance of like just because this is a doubling instrument, right? And we don't, uh, you know, you're practicing saxophone, doing all your papers, all your other schoolwork. It's kind of one of the first things you sort of forget to do during the week. Um, so just leaving it set up, but. Um, I've just sort of noticed that I do this this past week, because the past couple of weeks I was thinking about it. But um, if you're like reading a passage like this, for example, and like, I mean, a tricky part for the flutes is probably bars 40 to 42, right? Just like memorize it. And then you know, you have this set up in your room, doing laundry or whatever, like making dinner, and you're just like, I'm gonna pick up my flute, I'm gonna play that one line. Like, because I was doing that with just like chromatic scales and stuff this week, right? Like different passages that are screwing me up in different pieces I need to play, right? Um, so anyway, that's just something to think about for both you guys, just like, Memorizing tricky lines and working on it over the week, and then it's not tricky anymore. Um, okay, but anyway, so for flutes, could we take it from bar 40? I just want to hear you guys do that. And really being conscious of slurring that. Um, one, two. Right, okay, so we're going we're gonna to work on this really quick, really slow, uh, starting on bar 41. Um, and I'm just going to cue every single note, okay? And we're slurring it, so. Right. So, I mean, it's... Yeah, you know, it's, it's really just a matter of practicing it. Like, like even, like... What I do when I get up there is you start do because uh, you know you're doing the jumps like F to G or uh, D to E and whatever, and you're doing kind of these weird finger jumpy things, right? But just going and and like I mean, you heard like the first couple times I did that, there was like a bit of discrepancy, right? There was a break in the sound, the note didn't speak. And I mean, and it's just a matter of like, you know, getting the muscle memory and remembering how that feels. So that when you're going up there and like, for example, sight reading like this, it becomes a little bit easier to sort of work on that. Um, but yeah, I don't think we need to spend any more time on that. Um, that's just, you know, that's just individual practice. That's, that's not a big deal. Um, okay, let's, um, let's take it from 46 to the end. Um, yeah, big, biggest focus, dynamics and... Um, and articulations, because I'm kind of missing some of the dynamics at parts and the articulations. It's almost like two beats and then it jumps in, and then it's great. So just um, just think ahead, and it's going to sound fantastic. So bar 46, let's turn this up. Cool. One, two. <laughs>
I'm just about out of time, but just my last comment before I run off is, um, so when the articulation changes because you're slurring and the, the time is good, like it's, it's moving, the second the staccatos come in, you're almost giving it too much space. Like there's a tendency for uh, when that starts to happen, it's like dot, 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 dot. Like I'm, I'm over exaggerating by like a ton, but like you understand what I mean? Like, so being conscious, like switching the articulation, but keeping the time moving. Um, but yeah, that sounds great. So that's, um, that concludes my doubling lesson for today. So I'm gonna hand it off to Andy. Yeah, yeah.